Hey guys, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at the World Maker Fair 2012, New York City, and I'm here with Jim Burke, the founder of Power Racing Series. What is Power Racing Series? Well, Power Racing Series is a $500 electric motorsport. Basically, you have $500 to take a power wheel, hack and mod it, put better motors in it, better batteries, and then you go through a series of challenges. Power wheels, so the kids racing cars you find in Toys R Us. I really wanted one as a kid, like the Batmobile. And they're off! More power, same number of wheels. How, how are they different? They're 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 different in a in a number of ways. Uh, a lot of them operate well. Actually, all of them are required to operate 36 volts. Um, we allow certain battery technologies, and uh, they're heavier, they're faster, they they corner better and they actually require a little bit of talent to both fix, mend, and race. The teams competing here, they're hacker spaces, collectives. What kind of modifications have they put into the cars? Well, we've had a lot of modifications over here. We had 15 hacker spaces that have competed in the last season. Um, that's roughly 23 to 26 cars. Modifications range all over the board to uh, the kind of motors that they use. Some of them are using brushless, some are using brush motors. Other, th other than that, there's like different battery technologies every once in a while. We have the AGM sealed cell batteries and we have uh, um, we have lithium pro uh, lipo batteries as well, um, but we also have there's there's a different uh, a aspect of the power racing series involves uh, the moxie of the cars, whether or not they're decorated. They have uh, certain things they do. Some of them they put car horns on there just for fun, and uh, the idea is to get the crowd involved and they get the crowd invested in the, into the series and actually get to know some of the hacker spaces at the same time. Oh, that's awesome. And so like there are a lot of different approaches to modifying cars, but it seems like, you know, watching the races here, the qualifiers, they get pretty close, like, you know, 22, 23 seconds. Yeah. And so it's pretty balanced as a, as a race. Yeah, um, I mean, there's always slower cars, but uh, yeah, towards the top of the field, you'll see cars that have vastly different solutions to the same problem. And what's really neat about this series is you get to see hacker spaces evolve from, you know, not knowing much about how the car should set up to, you know, well, I, I made a coke cart once to, um, actually really understanding the machines perfectly and and the best part about it is just having that evolution from making a slow car that's for their first season to coming back next year and just killing it just really performing amazingly so I'm really happy that that's a part of what's going on today and the racetrack here is just like a parking lot I mean what do you what do you think about when you design a racetrack for these type of cars um, for this we try to keep the tracks as safe as possible sometimes we have you know certain limitations on the the length and the width and the, the kind of materials we're using to as the barriers but the, the, the main goal is to create a racetrack that is that keeps them at bay keeps the crowds far away but at the same time gives them to you know gives them a chance to really fight it out Really the thing that teams have to do here is they, they something breaks, they have to fix it. They have no choice but to fix it. Tomorrow you're doing like a whole 75 minute race. Yeah. Cars will break down. Like you said, they have to adapt on the fly and actually repair, go to the pit, right? Yeah, well, there's a 75 minute endurance race tomorrow at 1 p.m. And it is absolute mayhem on the track. Cars will break. There are certain times where if there some there'll be only a few cars left on the track while the other ones are in the pits fixing. And then they get back out and the idea is just complete laps. The goal is to complete as many laps as you can and you just watch the hacker spaces basically do what they do best, which is fix things in a short period of time for, for absolutely nothing, for cheap. <laughs> What's the most surprising thing you've seen come from a team in power racing in the past four years you've known it? Uh, there's a lot of surprises. Um, I mean, right now the big surprise at New York is uh, the uh, three camera 720p live Ustream feed coming off a of Sector's car that you can go onto um, I believe it's on, yeah, Ustream, uh, Sector 67's account. It, it works, and it works brilliantly. I have people watching it on their phones as the event goes on. How fast do these cars go? Uh, there's a range. Uh, the slowest cars probably do about 5 miles an hour. The fastest cars, if we gave them enough space, could probably hit about 35. And the drivers wear helmets and knee pads oh, yeah. and a lot of safety gear? Oh, man, yes. They wear dr helmets, knee pads, the works. We really try to go out of our way to say, yeah, you know, have the helmets, have some gloves on, you know, be safe about it. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Karen Corbeil. Aero races are great for Formula One and top league motorsports, but for something where you just want the driver to decide who wins and the people who build the cars, that's what we like doing here at the Power Racing Series. Awesome, let's check out some races. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give them the red, yellow, and green. When the green goes on, they go. All right. Are you ready, drivers? All right, here we go. 
And they're off. 7 to 67 with a massive start. Fantastic start. Sector 67. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Sector 67. A fantastic victory. A gripping last lap. All right, so that was an amazing race. I'm here with Mike Erickson of Sector 67. You just won this 15 lap race. How do you feel? It's, it's good. It's good to, uh, you know, have a good competition. Uh, we entered the competition like uh, two years ago, or uh, last year I guess was our first year, and we did pretty well there. Uh, we really had one really strong competitor, which is still our strong competitor right now. It's I3 Detroit, Karen Corbeil, the Cannonball. It, it feels really good because a lot of work goes into these cars. It's good to have that payoff for them too. So Sector 67, your team is a hackerspace in Madison, Wisconsin, yeah. and you guys just decide to get together, go to like, go to a KB Toy Stores or Toys with some buy power wheels. Like, how did that happen? So actually, we have a uh, pretty active, uh, you know, makerspace, hackerspace, and uh, we actually a lot of these came from uh, members that are that they, they want to spend more time in the hacker space but they don't really and they pay attention more on the mailing list and such so basically we had these like handed to us or referred to us to say hey you know there's this uh, power wheel sitting on a curb at this place and we just run out and get it um, so both of these were not purchased at uh, at toy store we actually just pulled them off curbs we tried to do as much consistent with the the original power wheels as possible you can see that the complete outside of the, the body Bodywork is still there, but really it's not used for any structure at all. It's really just bodywork. Underneath that is custom builds, frame out of actually really low cost material. We use bed frame from where we could find it and scrap it and uh, weld it together. There's one sort of mathematical equation that we would generally apply to this, and that's what I affectionately call the go kart equation. It's basically figuring out how fast your motors go and how fast you want your car to go to define how, what your gearing is. And then once you figure out your gearing, then it's really just a matter of, of you know how much can you how much current can you push into the motors before they blow up. You know uh, we really are running these things like five times more than they're designed to. So we've had to basically added cooling to the system, water cooling. It sounds more fancy than it is. We basically have water spraying on the motor. You know we try to keep it as toy car looking as possible, so that still people get really excited about it and it's it's kind of cool looking. So. That's, that's basically the, you know, what, what we're trying to do now. What's next? We got a few ideas in the works, but nothing solid right now. All right, and where can people find more about Sector, Sector 67? That would be at sector67.org. Cool, well, congratulations on the win, and uh, good luck in the future power racing series. All right, thank you very much.